Poland's ambitions to use its expanding military might be thwarted by criticism of its purported rule of law problems and worries over its armament imports from non-NATO nations outside of Europe. Will the emergence of Poland as a new military superpower have an impact on Germany? Will Poland be able to defeat Germany? Make sure to stay tuned until the end. Poland is perhaps the strongest force in Europe, and due to Warsaw's paranoia regarding Moscow, this army will only get stronger in the years to come. The rise of Poland as a military force in Europe may improve Warsaw's political sway there, as well as its standing as a strategic partner in Washington. Moscow's aggressiveness in Ukraine has further bolstered Warsaw's ambition to establish a powerful ground army on the eastern edge of Europe. Poland's concerns about Russia have pushed Warsaw to reject the consensus that conventional combat is a thing of the past. The Polish army must be so strong that it can win battles on the basis of strength alone. On the night before Poland's Independence Day, Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki made a statement. Poland's expanding military capabilities, geopolitical standing, and geographical location have all contributed to Warsaw's relevance in the eyes of the U.S. in the aftermath of the war in Ukraine. Washington has often argued that Europe needs to strengthen its defense capabilities and be prepared to defend itself as it turns its attention away from the old continent and towards the Pacific. In this regard, Poland's desire to build a strong land force is warmly welcomed abroad and may even cause a change in the way Washington views its system of European alliances. A top U.S. Army official in Europe stated that Poland has grown to be our most significant partner in continental Europe, highlighting the crucial roles Poland has played in assisting Ukraine and bolstering NATO's Baltic border. As the United States' longtime European ally, Germany continues to be an important logistical partner for Washington. Even though Russian aggression has caused Germany to experience a Zeitenwende or a strategic turning point, Berlin continues to debate the specifics of military development. Warsaw, on the other hand, has been building its army for years. The authors point out that Warsaw has decided to increase its military spending from 2.4% of GDP to 5%, with the goal of spending 524 billion zloty on armed forces by 2035. Germany is pondering whether it can meet NATO's 2% goal after using up a previously designated 100 billion euro defense investment fund. Germany spent approximately 1.5% of its GDP on defense last year. Poland already owns more tanks and howitzers than Germany, and while Warsaw's army is only about 150,000 strong now compared to Berlin's 170,000, by 2035, that number is intended to increase to 300,000. Furthermore, Poles are much more supportive of their military than Germans are, where a lack of military culture might impede the development of the force. Karnichnig and Co. contend that Warsaw has yet to be able to turn its military might into expanding political influence in Europe. The conflict between Poland and the European Union on numerous fronts is the fundamental cause of this. The Law and Justice Party government has been criticized by EU institutions for allegedly undermining the rule of law and transgressing democratic principles. Furthermore, political rivalry even within the PIS is eroding Poland's unity. Washington's disapproval of Poland's domestic political and rule of law difficulties hinders its potential as a strategic ally. It's important to remember that during his presidential campaign, Joe Biden made references to totalitarian governments as well as Poland and Hungary. Washington might also object to Warsaw's recent signing of significant contracts with South Korea for the procurement of military hardware, despite the fact that during its initial round of military acquisitions, Poland purchased a significant amount of US technology for its military buildup. Poland has so far purchased weapons from Korea valued at 10 to 12 billion dollars, including 218 K239 Chunmu rocket launchers, 48 FA-50 light attack aircraft, 180 K-2 Black Panther tanks, and 200 K-9 Thunder howitzers. By the middle to the end of the 2020s, the Koreans are also anticipated to deliver a combined total of 1,000 K-2 tanks and 600 K-9 howitzers. According to the Politico report, Korea has a competitive advantage because its military equipment is typically less expensive and more quickly made than its American and European counterparts. The authors note that PIS Chairman Jaroslav Kaczynski warned in a town hall meeting with his constituents in November that Poland was prepared to buy arms in other EU countries, but they need to stop their war against Poland as evidence that the acquisition of Korean technology also sends a political message from Warsaw to the West. While Germany supports Poland's military expansion, France, which views East Central Europe as a barrier between itself and Russia, has concerns about Warsaw's recent purchases of Korean weapons. Poland's acquisition in Korea also go against the idea of European strategic autonomy advanced by French President Emmanuel Macron, who believes that Europe should be able to protect itself with weapons made in its own countries, particularly France. President Macron has been supportive of Prime Minister Viktor Orban's long-standing call for a combined European force, which he has made numerous times since the start of the conflict in Ukraine. 
Furthermore, the expansion of Hungary's armed forces is in line with the French president's perspective on the necessity of boosting the purchase of European military technology and strengthening the European and national military industries. The long-awaited and desperately needed modernization and reformation of the Hungarian defense forces will finally be realized during the next 10 years, according to the Zrinyi 2026 Defense and Force Development Program, which was unveiled by the Hungarian government in 2016. The main objective of the Force Development Program is to obtain NATO-compatible gear, from personal items to combat gear, not just by importing cutting-edge technologies from NATO members, but also by enhancing domestic manufacturing capabilities. Hungary will be able to independently produce entire military systems thanks to this. In some Hungarian cities, this kind of manufacturing capacity development is already well underway. Military drones and armored vehicles are constructed in Kaposvar, while military helicopter parts are produced in Gyula. Small arms are produced at Kiskun Filigihaza with a license from the Czech Republic, along with ammunition and mortars in Var Palota and radars in Niertelek. Additionally, Zalegersek produces infantry fighting vehicles and Budapest houses an IT hub for sophisticated military systems. In 2024, Hertenberger Defense Systems, which the Hungarian government just acquired, will also move its headquarters there. The Lynx KF-41 infantry combat vehicle is one of the most significant advancements in HDF military technology, giving it back some of its lost capacity. The Lynx combat vehicles made by Rheinmetall AG will eventually be assembled in Zalegerzeg, and the Hungarian Defense Forces will get 46 of them by 2023 and another 172 by 2029, according to the Hungarian Ministry of Defense. To sum up, Poland's strong force development in the face of Russian aggression in Eastern Europe not only elevates the nation in the EU, but also gives Warsaw the potential to become a crucial ally for Washington on the continent. Critiques of the rule of law and worries about Poland's arms purchases from non-NATO nations outside of Europe, however, may hinder its attempts to use its expanding military might to exert political influence. Even though they are implemented differently, the Polish and Hungarian force developments demonstrate that Central and Eastern Europe is dedicated to expanding its contribution to Europe's security in these trying times. Moreover, on Friday we saw the adoption by Polish MPs of a new law that the government is hoping will placate the European Union and free up billions of euros in assistance. The proposal seeks to increase judicial accountability and has the potential to defrost a 35 billion euro COVID recovery fund from Brussels. Brussels and Warsaw have been at odds with the Justice and Development Party's rollback of media freedoms and reforms to the judiciary, which the EU argues harmed the nation's democracy. Brussels has restricted Poland's ability to receive funding from the EU unless it makes necessary adjustments. According to the right-wing coalition administration, the new law has been agreed upon with Brussels officials and should result in the release of the urgently required billion euro fund. For the EU, Poland's earlier reforms did not go far enough. However, the justice minister, who proposed the modifications to tighten political control over judges, is against them. While President Andrzej Duda said he hadn't been consulted on the new law, the speaker threatened the government's future. The issue has gained importance because of the upcoming general election in the fall. Surveys indicate that the ruling coalition may lose its majority in the legislature, so the administration is attempting to secure EU funding in an effort to increase public support. With 189 abstentions and a vote of 203 to 52, the lower house of parliament approved the law despite disagreements within the ruling coalition and skepticism from the opposition. Vladislav Kozniak-Kamis, the leader of an opposition party, was one of those who voted against it. The rule of law is not reinstated by this bill. Before the vote in parliament, he said, only if we, the opposition, triumph in the elections will that be feasible. Kosenyak Kamis continued, but if this measure is a potential for the unblocking of the European monies, it is absolutely significant. It was unclear right away if the EU would be pleased with the amendments, but a representative for the European Commission told the Polish state news agency PAP that the law was a crucial step toward fulfilling EU requirements. Christian Wigan told PAP, we will continue to closely monitor the following steps of the ongoing adoption decision and then analyze the final law enacted. Will Poland defeat Germany in the future if a dispute arises again? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed watching this video, then please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos.